let's go. <laughs> MILF route achieved. <laughs> you knew it was going to happen. We all knew it was going to happen. We knew the mother was going to be a soulmate. <laughs> now, I have to admit, was not expecting the mother's story to be quite that dark and possibly extremely controversial. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if people are going to be outraged by this. It was it was honestly a very dark story. I, I guess it kind of saves itself in the idea that the mother was, you know, behind the whole thing or like she decided the whole thing. But it's still like one of those question marks of like, who did she pay that would be willing to break a lot of moral boundaries in order to make this happen? I, I think the more shocking thing is because when essentially when they're explaining the whole situation, she talk about how Hakari is just like me. The moment that she finds somebody, she's going to be devotedly in love. And, oh, here's my story. When I was 13, I fell in love with this guy. And my assumption at that point was because she said that he people fall ill and die. My assumption at that point is that she fell in love with some dude. And the dude died. And then, again, she used her money to get a sample from him immediately so that she could be artificially inseminated and then taken care of so that she could have a child at 13. But no, he was alive. <laughs> He was alive. She just went through the whole process and had them medically do that and get it done with so that she could bear his child and then he dies. Uh, it's like extremely dark if you think about it. <laughs> Which, yes, leads me into my my assumption as, as to what the mother's shtick's going to be. Like each one of them have a joke, obviously, Kusuli with the, the medicine and then you have Kanane with Sundere and whatnot. The mother's going to be pretty much Hakari. But going all the way, like Hakari is all in her mind that she wants to do crazy stuff with Rintaro. She's like super thirsty. The mother's going to be super thirsty, but act on it. So I can, I can totally see the coming episodes literally going to be the mom constantly asking him for a sample, constantly chasing around, finding, which <laughs> I can just see them being at school and the mother shows up and the teachers are going, why are you here? What are you doing asking this boy at school for a sample? I think it's going to probably get very, very risky. <laughs> Again, certain groups are probably going to make a big fuss about this. We'll see. I don't know. It, it's kind of like with Tomo-chan as a girl. It's like, yeah, technically that whole situation with that mother raised up a bunch of red flags. Like, this girl was really young. How did this happen? Uh, but this one, I guess, like I said, is technically her choice, but she was too young to make that choice herself. So it's still going to be that questionable gray area. But again, we all understand this is just a joke. This is just a show. This is just a comedy. It's fake. No, this is real. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I, I can't, I can't wait to see what they end up doing with her. Again, a girl with, a lady with too much money, um, and she's technically a virgin. <laughs> I guess that's why they did that whole route with the whole insemination thing, is they wanted to keep the character, one of the girlfriends, to be virgin. And how could you get a, a MILF to be a virgin? <laughs> the fact that she was, it was done through medical, uh, means. Anyways, yeah, that was, that was super interesting. I, I was... Honestly, a little bit surprised how long it took for the conversation to lead to the the shock. I, I think after a while, that conversation happening, my mind was immediately thinking, okay, either maybe it's not going to be a soulmate, or, and I was assuming at the time, because he can't see her. So it's kind of established the idea that they, they have to see each other. They have to look at each other for it to happen, which makes sense. Every single case of this happening, they look each other in the eye and then zappy zappies. Uh, even with Kusudi, he's walking by. Very briefly, they catch, they catch eye contact, and boom, it happens. So yeah, it kind of made sense that that had to happen. Which was nice, because it technically opened the door to sort of the two sides seeing some sort of care before it happens. From Rintaro's side, is he is essentially caring for the mother and Hakari. That what they went through is really tragic, and that, that's what makes him get emotional. From her side, she sees that he is emotional for their... Their struggles they went through is something that she's probably been bottling up this whole time. So yeah, she, for a brief moment, seen some sort of care in him. So it at least opens that door to seeing that there's some sort of relationship. <laughs> I like how they, they have to point out the obvious. The narrator has to point out the obvious that she's been without love, rejecting love for 16 years. That was her only love. That was her devotion. Hakari, same thing. She's going to have that one person that she's devoted to for the rest of her life. And I can't let her do that because you're a five-timer. And then it goes to that whole thing, that whole spiel about how she can never love again, and she gave up on love, and then well, how is she going to respond to this? Go out with me. <laughs> Blinded by love again. <laughs> um, it just makes me wonder what's going to happen with Hakari. <laughs> I'm actually mostly curious as to what Hakari's response to this is going to be, because she's been in her room the whole time. She's just sitting up there, wondering what's happening. And then she's going to come down there and find that her mother is all thirsty over Rintaro. 
Is she going to be accepting? I mean, Hakai's been pretty accepting of everybody else joining the Rentaro family. Is she going to be okay with mom doing it as well? And how is mom going to be with the other ones? Is she going to be more, I guess, clingy? Like, nobody else can have this. It's, it's a massive question mark. Like, <laughs> I guess I guess I'm going to probably open up the next episode with the idea of, you know, the mother being pretty much like, you know, look, I'm allowing this to happen, but I'm going to be a part of it too kind of thing. But we'll see. I'm very curious how they're going to handle that. Uh, the rest of the episode was was pretty decent. There's like a side of me that's like, I, I don't like how they laid it out because the joke wasn't, or the theme and the joke wasn't so much the mansion, but so much more the characters themselves having a shtick. Like each one of them had kind of a joke that they played off all the time. Like Kanane was, this is a rich person's garden. This is a rich cat. This is a rich dog. <laughs> this is a rich everything. And then you had pretty much, you know, with Nano is she constantly wants to do things that are morally wrong because it's efficient. <laughs> the best way to handle this cat is to kick it and disable it. <laughs> Don't do that. We should gouge the dog's eyes out. Please don't do that. And then, yes, the whole rock thing and knocking up the, the, the lock itself was interesting. Oh, yeah, she also pretty much made the contraption for them to get over the, the, the lights. Yeah, Karane, that whole belly thing. <laughs> they, they have to have that position. They literally have to do, like, a 69 position to go over it. All for the sake that they could be in a compromised position. I think Shizuka, I think, is the only one that was a little bit disappointing. Like, Shizuka, yes, it was cute, the whole beginning segment where she's kind of clinging on the fence and he has to help her down. And then the whole situation later on with using the, the voiceover to make a meow noise. But yeah, it was pretty much just the dog. Like, she just played dead. And she's a noble sacrifice. <laughs> and then drinking the potion and falling asleep. They didn't do much with Shizuka, which was very disappointing. But Kusuri, obviously, I think was a lot more story development for her. And the idea that she was actually planning on going to you know, sign up for some overseas company, pharmaceutical company, and she gave that up to help Hakari. But that's pretty much all the characters. Like, this what this episode, I think, was trying to introduce this idea of the Rentaro family. The Rentaro family, all of them care for Hakari, which we've been kind of getting hints of over the last few episodes. I mean, with them helping Suzuka all the time, with um, Hakari stepping in front of the people and and telling Nano that she's more wor just as worthy as anybody else for his time. Each one of them has kind of show that they care for each other. And yes, Hakare and Kanane make it out, <laughs> which we're all for, <laughs> which is definitely technically the, the best part of the whole sh the series is just shipping the two of them and not the rest of it. But like I said, I, I, I think the overall like structure of the episode, I, I think pulled too much away from what they could have done with just Hakare and our family in general. It just kind of turned into, they went all the way in there, they cracked a bunch of jokes, and then when they finally arrived there, they're in front of the mom. And, yeah, I like the fact that he technically tried to do the whole speech. And she's like, you're not going to win me over that way. Um, that was kind of funny. They actually played off that joke with the, the boy just saying the right things. And the mother going, oh, yeah, you're totally right. I accept the whole thing now. Let's move on. But it was still kind of a little disappointing that it would just felt like all that other stuff was sort of a waste to build into essentially a very easy punchline, which is they look each other in the eyes and doki doki, it's all resolved. So it is kind of a little bit of a letdown. Like, of course, I've had a lot. Of, I had a lot of theories in the last episode. This idea of like him accidentally grabbing the mom and running off instead of Hakari, and that could have. I I really thought that was going to happen because he had the eye drops, but that didn't happen. It just turned into, like I said, them all saying how much they care for Hakari, and then at the very end, the soulmate snap happens, and that fixed the whole situation, which was just as equally too simple as him saying the right words and the mother accepting the whole situation. But I think the, the more interesting kind of punchline is the build up to what the mother was and how she had Hakari, which is again, extremely dark. But additionally, it was kind of funny to kind of actually get an answer for why Hakari is so massively thirsty. <laughs> like it's just in her blood. That's just how she is. And again, technically the mom's probably gonna be more acting on it than anybody else. Uh, but yeah, I think the other big reveal in this episode was honestly Nano and how extremely brutal she is when it comes to certain things. <laughs> like she's willing to kick a cat. Anyhow, that's my that's my thoughts on episode 10 of 100 Girlfriends who really, 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 really love you. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, if you did, make sure that like button down below. Comment. Let me know if you like the episode. Additionally, if you're new to the channel, make sure that subscribe button to get my content. I do news, reviews, first impressions, top list if it's anime. It's pretty much here. Additionally, if you want to support the channel more and you like this content, I have a Patreon link, tips link, super thanks, membership button down below. Greatly, greatly, greatly appreciate what it does. And y'all take care.